And welcome once again to Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr, joined by Juan Zarate, our national security analyst. Juan, good to see you. Bob, great to see you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how we now define Al-Qaeda. This is a group that's much, much different than it was uh, on 9-11, 2001. And also that raises challenges about how we go about getting after Al-Qaeda. Yeah, this is a huge issue, Bob. It, the question of Al-Qaeda uh, is predominant in not just counterterrorism circles, but it's an important political, diplomatic, legal question. Um, the Al-Qaeda of 2012 is not the Al-Qaeda that hit us on 9-11. It's a very different uh, movement, a very different network. What you have, and we've talked about this often on Flashpoints, is a metastasized, fractured movement uh, that is no longer driven by the old Al-Qaeda core, the old bin Laden hierarchy out of the, the, the 1990s and the days of the Afghan Mujahideen. Instead, you have a franchised model. Uh, groups, for example, Al-Qaeda and Islamic uh, Maghreb in North Africa, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen, the Al-Shabaab movement in Somalia, cells and groups that are ideologically aligned with Al-Qaeda but not being directed by them all over the world. And so this presents a major challenge for the counterterrorism community as to how to define this group and the threat and then for policymakers and politicians as to how you talk about the threat, because there's no question that Al-Qaeda core, the old Al-Qaeda that hit us on 9-11, has been decimated. There's no question about that, and that strategically we've, we've hit a turning point with them. But the reality is you have a very different kind of Al-Qaeda movement that still presents a risk and could be taking advantage of the opportunities in the wake of these Arab revolutions. Let's talk about our biggest effort uh, weapon-wise against Al-Qaeda. That's been the use of the drone. Uh, using drones, we've decimated, as you say, Al-Qaeda core in the Pakistan-Afghanistan region. Uh, we've had drone strikes now in Yemen. Uh, are we going to see expanded use of drone strikes? Is that an option for the U.S.? Well, what you've seen uh, being debated internally within the U.S. government, reported by the Washington Post, CBS, and others, is a debate about how to regularize the targeting criteria. How do, how do we think about how we use lethal force to attack elements of the enemy, uh, elements of the Al-Qaeda network? This, though, is a very interesting question because it surfaces th these very fundamental questions about what is the enemy? What is an al-Qaeda enemy? And who can justifiably be targeted legally and under international law with lethal force? Uh, and is this a global battle space? Something the Bush administration talked about, something the Obama administration has talked about and defended. Um, and so what does that look like? And do we need to rethink how we categorize the threat? Because, again, we're not talking about the classic al-Qaeda, but we're talking about groups and individuals and networks, perhaps directly affiliated, perhaps loosely so. And what does that mean, then, for our ability to target these individuals? Well, internationally, how would that play? I mean, is the rest of the world going to stand by as the U.S. just decides wherever it wants to? to launch unilateral drone strikes, standoff power? Right. This plays two ways diplomatically, one, Bob. The, the first is, uh, the U.S. has to defend the use of force, and you've seen the U.S. come under increasing criticism for the use of targeted strikes. You've seen it from U.N. officials, you've seen it from human rights groups, and so the Obama administration has had to go out forcefully uh, to argue that these are legal, defensible, um, internationally acceptable uh, principles and, and tactics. That will continue. The other side of it, though, is interesting because you have countries like Yemen or allies in North Africa or East Africa saying, you should consider all of these people that we're fighting, who, f who fight under the banner of Al-Qaeda, to be uh, your enemies as well as ours. And under our legal doctrine, we may be parsing that to say, no, we can't treat that whole group there that's controlling that territory or trying to fight you as Al-Qaeda, and we therefore can't strike them. We can only strike those that are planning imminent strikes against the U.S. directly. And so it's actually just a very small group of people within that broader movement. And so that creates tension with our allies who, who will say, look, we're fighting al-Qaeda. How is it that you're not going to help us fight this broader group or this bro broader insurgency? Our argument is, perhaps, um, it's the al-Qaeda group that is directly threatening the U.S that can be subject to these kinds of lethal strikes. And so that creates tension, actually, diplomatically. And we're almost out of time, but also that also raises the specter of a real Wild West uh, mentality, because if we won't target people, Al-Qaeda members, that maybe are targeting someone else, that w other countries could. I mean, Israel, for example, could. Other European countries could launch drone strikes of their own. No, that's right. And, and the, the question of where the use of targeted strikes evolves as the Al-Qaeda landscape changes is going to be a fascinating one, because it's going to be uh, more metastasized, harder to classify, 
um, and there's going to be calls for being able to, to actually pinpoint not only uh, the types of strikes we use, but who are these individuals against whom we're using these strikes? And that's not just going to be a U.S. question, it's going to be a question for our allies who are also fighting Al-Qaeda in their midst. Difficult questions, and we'll probably tackle those again on another day. Absolutely. Juan, thanks very much. Thank you, Bob. And thanks to you for watching Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. We'll see you next time.